Welcome to a demonstration of active archiving with Swarm Object Storage using DataCore Filefly software for migration. This lightweight software targets environments that have Windows NTFS files, as well as SMB shares on Windows file servers, NetApp, and Isilon network attached storage. The principal purpose of Filefly is to offload those files of lesser importance that are consuming a lot of capacity on your primary storage and place them instead on secondary storage. In this way, we evacuate space for hot data where you most need it. The process involves migrating the file contents to the lower cost object storage, truncating the file sizes to zero and designated the files as offline. From the user's perspective, their behavior doesn't change. They still see those files in their original folder locations and access normally. In the case and rare case where someone needs to access one of these files that has been offloaded, Filefly transparently recalls the files back to the primary storage and once again populates that space. Active archiving from primary storage to swarm proceeds automatically and periodically following a one-time setup of Filefly. We'll demonstrate these steps shortly. First, you identify the source file shares and subfolders using the internal assessment tool to chart the biggest capacity consumers according to file types and owners. The built-in savings calculator then estimates the cost reductions resulting from offloading files meeting specific criteria, such as last modified date more than three years ago. This helps you refine which migration rules will have the largest space savings and financial benefits. You then simply schedule periodic scans, maybe weekly or monthly, to check for additional files matching the rules so you don't have to do this manually. In our demo, we're interested in freeing up capacity from an overloaded Windows file server called FFWinServe. Based on its full path name to the share, and below it you can see the current subdirectories. With Filefly, you can choose to apply operations at a subdirectory or right at the root of the directory. So if you wanted to just migrate certain ones, you could pick those specifically or exclude others from it. A report will tell you, for example, what is the current consumption of that file server? How is the, what are the files distribution in terms of timeline? Here we see the long-term trend in this particular file server. It's a marketing share, has numerous files that are well beyond four or five years old. Those will be of much interest in trying to alleviate the load on the system. The file type breakdown tells us how much is on MP4, how much in, design, in zip files, WAV files, etc. And we also get a look at the distribution according to owners. In this case, Jurgen owns the lion's share with Augie, Marty, and Jane close behind. We can also see full breakdown tells us a little bit more, not just by bytes used, but also by file count. Sometimes the large number of files may not contribute significantly to the overall consumption, but they may seem quite numerous. And you see those two. The savings calculator is likely the most interesting one from an economic standpoint, where we can express what the difference in price would be for the primary versus the secondary storage. And from there, we can assess the value of migrating particular files. So for example, in this case, for these shares, if we were to pick files that were, let's say, seven years and older, the savings would amount to about $7,000. However, if we started to go to some of the more current files, really still quite old, maybe four years old, you could see how the savings magnifies to $12,500. Knowing that the biggest consumer of storage in this case are MP4 files, let's see what we can do to offload those. For that, we'll look at our rules. One of the rules we've set up here is migrate files that are older than three years that have an MP4 suffix. We 
are going to target a destination which is a swarm object storage in Austin, Texas. This also gives us a chance to see which files might appear in that. So if we were to look at something like this, these three files are going to fall into that criteria and they will be migrated according to the chosen rule. This can be scheduled to occur during off hours because data transfers do take place. Obviously, as you move files from the original source to the secondary storage. And so what we wanna do is ensure that those don't conflict with normal workloads and don't increase contention for it. We can set that on a schedule that basically avoids production activities. We can also run these on demand. And what it's doing, it's basically going through that file server and it's starting to report to you in live its progress. The files are being migrated as we speak. We can look ahead and see how far it's proceeding. It's basically scanning those files, determining which ones fit, and moving those across. So we'll let this run to its completion and come back. The offload rate will be determined largely by the speed of the machines involved and the internet connection to your S3 target. Let's look at what's happening at the destination. The destination we chose was the Swarm object storage platform in Austin. And if we look at that particular bucket, what we'll find is that there are the file hierarchy that we've originally had on the source is recreated as an object store. So FF Win Server on AG Lab local domain is the original source location and the shares you remember we picked up. So here are some of those files. Betty had quite a few older files and here are the ones that have migrated today. So you can see in this case, we've chosen to retain those original file names and then there's a timestamp associated with when they were offloaded. These files can also from Swarm, should you need to for any reason, you can also download those. So you can get a little bit more idea about them from Swarm. So the content viewer in Swarm is what we're in now, the content portal. And that tells us this originally was created and modified back in 07, 2013 was the last time it was created. Having completed the migration, let's see what the client would perceive as they open that share and they look at some of those videos that have been migrated. So in the main video folder example, we see this one. It's a 463 meg file, pretty large one, originally built in 2014, and it has the offline indicator in the icon. When we look further at the properties 452 megabytes has been moved off, freed. That space has been freed on the main Windows server. It has been transferred to secondary storage at a lower cost. And the new size on disk is reflected as zero. The original size remains because some applications need to look at that in order to make decisions. One other thing that happens is the attributes of that file have been modified to show it as offline. And that allows us to use backup products to scan through there and say, I realize this is an offline file. I do not need to back it up again. It's already been taken care of. And with that, we see the value and impact of having done the offload of expensive primary storage off to secondary storage. That video will be recalled as it was originally might take a little bit longer to do that. The speed at which this is being recalled is obviously dependent on the secondary storage and your internet connection. See, that's progressing. Now we have 379 megs of the 452 megabytes. Now I see the video output. It did take a little bit longer because I had to pull it down from secondary storage. At this point, it's all there. That concludes our demonstration of active archiving from primary file servers to data core swarm object storage using FileFly software. Thank you.